Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you guys how you can heat your hot water tank with your outdoor wood boiler. But right off the start, I'm just going to say, ignore this huge plumbing mess. This was here when we bought the house. It already had an outdoor wood boiler and it was plumbed like a disaster. The only thing I did is, is uh, plumb in our heat exchanger for our hot water tank. I do plan on changing this all because we are making this into a little room. I'm building a wall there and we're putting an electric backup boiler so when we're out of town, everything has heat and it's back feeding our boiler. So when I do that, I'm going to fix this all up It's because it's a disaster. Like it's mind boggling that someone thinks this is okay. But anyways, let's get into it. So right off the bat, if you're heating your outdoor wood boiler with a, I mean, if you're heating your hot water tank with your outdoor wood boiler, the savings alone in one year will pay for this system. I was reading on Google, that just for the, your pilot light on a propane hot water tank, the pilot light alone, $25 a month. So with you using the hot water, I'd say $50 minimum, six months burning with outdoor wood boiler, that's what we do. We're saving already $300 and that's paid for this system. These plate exchangers aren't that expensive. I think it's just over $100. I'll post the link in the description for you guys to buy one and have the price there, but it's not that expensive. A little bit of plumbing. It's well under $300 though, that's for sure. So let's see how this is plumbed in. This is a 20 plate heat exchanger that we're heating our hot water tank with. It's four and a half by 12, like the size. Don't get anything less. Get the four and a half or five by 12. It's well worth it, it's not that much more. You definitely want it. We're, he we're heating hot water for two people, that's why we went with a 20 plate. If you have like six people in your family, you might wanna go with a 30. I know people heating hot water for two people with a 10 plate. So I, I, we went for the 20 plate because it's not that much more and we've never run out of hot water and we never want to, right? So this is our hot water line coming from the outdoor wood boiler. So it flows through this plate exchanger this way. And it comes up here and goes to our 60 plate that heats our house. You always want to heat your hot water plate exchanger first or heat exchanger, say if you have a furnace, you still want it to go to the hot water always first. The reason being is when you're in that shower, if you have it heating your furnace first, your furnace uh, heat exchanger first, and that furnace kicks on, you're in the shower, you're gonna notice that slight temperature change while you're showering in the water, big time, you'll notice it. But if you're heating the hot water first and your furnace kicks on, you will never notice that slight temperature change in the air the furnace is putting out. So you always want to heat your hot water tank exchanger first. Okay, so this line here, this is our cold domestic line. So our cold domestic line feeds the top of the heat exchanger and flows this way. You always want it to be cross flow. So this is flowing crossways. That's the best heat exchange. You don't want them flowing the same way. And you always want your heat exchangers installed like this vertically, because if you have them horizontally, like flat like that, the sediment will uh, settle at the bottom. So make sure you install your heat exchangers vertical like this. You can put them above the hot water tank. I've seen that, but just make sure they're vertical. Okay, so we got our cold water coming in up here and it flows this way. And now this is our hot water line. This water has been heated and this heated water goes into the top port of our hot water tank in the cold inlet. And now it, that hot water is in this tank. It's already preheated from the boiler and it comes out the hot line here and this is just plumbed into your house as normal. This is where you'd have a mixing valve if you want a mixing valve. So what a mixing valve does is it cools the temp down a bit. So you have kids, you don't want them to burn. That's where you put a mixing valve in. We're two adults living here. We don't have one. I don't see the need for us to have one right now because we're not going to burn ourselves. Never have. And I don't think I ever will. But this is a, what a mixing valve looks like. So you have your hot water line coming in. Then you'd have a cold line going feeding it as well. And then this is the mixed water. This uh, knob up here will adjust the temperature how hot or cold you want it. So you might want to gauge on there too, so you can tell what the temperature is. Like this is on our mixing valve. There's our gauge right there. This ain't running right now, it's off. Because the house is too hot, it's on a thermostat, so it just shut itself off. But anyways, that's how easy it is. 
You can avoid this tank altogether. Like I said, this can work on demand because as this is already heated this water and this is basically a storage tank for it, you can avoid the tank altogether and have this heated line feeding direct to your house if you wanted. So you could have some valves off your, to close off your water tank and just feed your house directly and avoid this altogether. Because there is some, some reasons you might want to do that. Say you're not home a lot, you're vacationing a lot, because if you're gone for a week and you have it feeding your hot water tank like this setup here, when you get back in a week later, the water in this tank is not going to be that hot. So you could either uh, just turn your tank on temporary to heat that water up again. You could shower in the lukewarm water, that's what I do. Or you could plumb it so it avoids this tank altogether. That's one scenario you might want to do if you're not home a lot. Or say you want hot water in your garage. You don't want this big bulky tank in your, in your garage. Or you don't want a tank in your house. You could just, just because it takes up so much space, right? So you just avoid the tank altogether. And this is on demand hot water. So it's a very good system. It doesn't cost a lot of money. If you have an outdoor wood boiler, I highly recommend you doing this. The hot water is amazing. The savings, it just does, it doesn't make sense not to do it because the savings is there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, just put them down in the comments. Please subscribe, like this video. Thanks for watching.